السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he deserves to be praised the praise, the praise worthy um, This workbook or uh, this matter that we're going to be discussing about, which is worship of the heart, piety of the heart. This is a very important subject. And subhanAllah, it has such a big impact on your faith, on your actions. Because we all know that, you know, the the, the, the hadith of the Messenger Muhammad where he said, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ There's a morsel of flesh that if it was good then the, and sound, that the whole body will be good and sound. And if it went bad, then the whole body will go bad. And that is the heart. Of course, we're not talking about the physical ailments, as in, you know, like uh, diseases and disorders of the heart, the physical heart. We're talking about matters which are much more serious. If you, can, if you have a healthy heart, uh, you know, that pumps blood and that is very healthy, but it's filled with diseases of the heart as arrogance um, and other uh, issues like uh, seeing yourself better, belittling other people, hasad, envy. All of these, you know, they are much worse than the ailments of the physical heart because they affect your faith. And the same thing, the opposite is also true. The heart that has... Um, some of the virtues, some of the, has that has achieved some of the worships of the heart, like honesty, truthfulness, sincerity, love. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, honesty. Uh, all of these worships of the heart. Any small, uh, any change in these worships has a huge impact on our actions. Khushu', for example. And we can see this very evident in uh, in reciting the Quran, when praying behind an imam, or when listening to a lecture. We're all listening to a lecture, we're all sitting next to each other, listening. But after we leave, some of us, some of, this, some of the people who are attending, have higher faith than others. Why? They didn't do any action. Everyone was listening. But some of these worships of the heart made a difference. And this difference will have an impact on their worship. A person who has a higher level of faith, a person who has more worship of the heart, this person is more likely to do more acts of worship than a person who has a lower faith and less worships of the heart. A person who made a sin, who committed a sin, who has fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart, a person uh, who fear who has fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart, if he committed a sin, is not going to be like a person who has no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart. He will directly go, uh, he will repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will seek forgiveness uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The impact of that sin is not going to be the same as a person who has no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, the principle, we're going to be taking these principles, the base level, uh, the base, uh, the bare minimum of fear of Allah, this is avail This is in the hearts of all Muslims, but they vary on what's more than that. Right. Inshallah, we'll start. Uh, let me try to fix the camera, inshallah. Right. Uh, so introduction. The Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Okay, we spoke about this hadith that the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, talked about. So the heart is a special place. In it is where faith resides. What is so special uh, about the heart? This is one of the most important matters here. We know that uh, faith increases and decreases. But this is built on what? What makes faith increase or decrease? What makes faith increase or decrease? Can you answer in the chat? How do you increase your faith? And what are the things that decreases your faith? Type your answer in the chat. So what are the things? Good deeds increase your faith. Yes. 
uh, see some of you said tawakkul. Tawakkul is a worship. Yes, so good deeds in general, it increases your faith. Sins decrease your faith. طيب. So where is the effect of these things? The, the, the worship and the sin, it's the heart. Sometimes you feel motivated to do worship. Sometimes you feel <coughs> encouraged to do worship. Why is that? Because the faith in the heart is high. Sometimes you feel and you're more likely to sin and you feel discouraged to do worship. This could be that the faith is decreasing in the heart. And you have to fix this by doing easy worships. So the heart is a special place in it where um, and it is where the faith resides. A pure heart. What is a pure heart? We want to achieve the pure heart. A pure heart is the one that is filled with worships of the heart. So it's filled with worships of the heart and free from all the ailments of the heart. And it's free from all the ailments of the heart. And subhanAllah, these things vary. So the worships vary, the sins, they vary. They keep on you know, increasing and decreasing until you reach you know, a certain uh, level where once the faith builds up to a certain level, it becomes white and pure. What becomes white and pure? The heart becomes white and pure. طيب, when it becomes white and pure, it's protected from sins. And a person who has high faith with time, this heart is protected from sins, less likely to do sins. طيب, and, in, and is firm in times of trials and tribulations. When calamities happen, he is unfazed. He does not change. Yes, he becomes sad. Yes, when there's a loss, he's affected. But his firm faith is what supports him. He knows this is from Allah. He is patient. He seeks rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the effect of faith. While a person who has low level of faith might start wailing and saying bad things and blaming everything and saying, why did Allah oppress me? Astaghfirullah al He might say even bad things. That is why patience is to restrain yourself from saying something that is haram or doing something that is haram. See, this is where the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, described uh, both hearts. So when he described the righteous heart, the pure heart, he said, So it, it will reach a phase or a state where it becomes white, just like the white stone. And it, this heart will not be harmed by any fitna. A fitna, a test from Allah, or something that you, a test from Allah in the sense that some people, when this test comes, they fail it and they lose faith and they become, they, they lose a lot of faith. While those that pass this test, this fitna does not affect them. This fitna does not affect them. طيب. Or temptation as long as the heavens and the earth endure. So the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, said that this heart reaches a point where it becomes firm it becomes unaffected by sins. And this is something that we all should aim for. We should, we should all aim for a heart that is pure, a heart that endures uh, the different calamities. Because every single day we are tested with different things. In reality, some people think of a test as something that happens once in their lifetime. Or In reality, every single day for us, there's a test. I'll give you simple things. When the Adhan starts, when the Adhan starts, this is a test for you. Are you going to be praying on time? Or will you be preoccupied with other things and delay prayer until the prayer time ends? طيب, when you wake up for Fajr, do you wake up and pray Fajr on time? Or do you wait and, you know, your priority is work or family and you leave prayer until sunrise? This is another example. Qiyam uh, al-Layl, when, when you feel tired, I'm not saying in normal days. When you feel tired, you feel exhausted, you had a long day. Do you say, you know what, let me sleep today and rest? And I'll miss out on night prayer. Or do you say, you know what, just in case, let me pray some little night prayer before I sleep, just in case that I don't wake up before Fajr. So you're acting, you're taking precautions. Why? Because this is something that happened, you know, it's not every day that these things happen. But you're tested. Will you maintain your worship? Will you seek worship in these different matters? So in reality, every single day, we are tested. We are tested with our families. We are tested, and they are tested with us. We are tested with work, people that we work with. We are tested with our children, subhanAllah. Sometimes, you know, you wake them up for Fajr, but you say, they say, oh, we're tired, we want to sleep. So here, subhanAllah, as a parent, you say, okay, what do you want? Should I, I want what is best for them. So what is best for them? I make, uh, I leave them sleep or I wake them up. 
What does your faith tell you? Your faith tells you, no, waking them up and pray for them to pray is better for them. Definitely, even though they say, no, we can't. No, if you wake them up for prayer, this is definitely better for them, for their upbringing. Yeah, if the body rests, but the heart doesn't taste faith, يعني, what's the point? This whole life is a test. This whole life is a test. طيب. We start with the most important worship of the heart, which is sincerity. Okay. Uh, which is sincerity. طيب. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاء وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that they were not commanded except to worship Allah, being sincere to him in religion. This being sincere to Allah, I want to ask you a question. Being sincere to Allah, is this something specific to us, the Muslims, or was this uh, in general to all the nations? And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they were not commanded except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. Is this something specific to this nation? Or was this to all the nations? This is to all the nations. You see, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ We have sent to every nation a messenger commanding them to worship Allah and to leave all false uh, deities. What does this mean? To worship Allah alone and to leave all false deities. Isn't this what sincerity is? This is what ikhlas, to purify yourself, to purify your worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the message of Isa alayhi salam, Jesus. This was the message of Musa alayhi salam, Moses. This was the message of Ibrahim. This was the message of Nuh. This was the message of all the messengers. They were all commanded to tell to uh, they were all commanded to convey the message of Islam to the people, which is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to leave all false deities. And some people might say, you know what, we're not prostrating to um, what's it called? Um, any idol or any statue or whatever. We're worshiping Allah. Yeah, but sincerity differs. Sincerity is many different levels. You think that sincerity is just saying La ilaha illallah? That's the base level. SubhanAllah, this was not mentioned. I have to mention this principle. Okay. Th there's an important, pr uh, SubhanAllah, I don't know how I did not mention this. This is an important principle that we have to understand. All worships of the heart, all worships of the heart, the base level is achieved with all Muslims. For example, a person who enters Islam and he says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship but Allah. And I bear witness that the Messenger of Muhammad وسلم, is a servant and messenger. And I bear witness, for example, that Isa السلام, is also a servant of Allah and a messenger of Allah. Is this person not sincere? I'm asking you a question. Is this person not sincere? He says, I, I, I bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship but Allah. Is this person sincere or not? What do you think? Of course he is sincere. If he is not sincere, then this declaration is not accepted. But when he said, when he made this claim that he is, that he, he, he witnessed that there's no God worthy of worship but Allah, he's definitely sincere. Tayyib, let me ask you this. As a new Muslim, some of my brothers and sisters, you are new Muslims. When you are a new Muslim, do you compare your heart, the sincerity in your heart, to that of it now after seeking knowledge and doing more worship? It's not, is it the same? Or do you feel that sincerity increased? Inshallah, sincerity did not decrease. But I'm saying, Inshallah, do you feel that sincerity increased? Sincerity definitely increased. Sincerity is not one level. Sincerity is not, sincerity is different levels. A person, let me tell you this, a person, you know, who prays the obligatory prayers on time and see some of the here are saying, yes, sincerity increased. Some of uh, a person who prays obligatory prayer on time. OK, and he prays the preferred worship. Is he the same? 
uh, as a person who only play, prays the obligatory worship. And, you know, he's a Muslim, he believes he's sincere, but he doesn't do anything more. They're not the same. Why? Because the first person, his sincerity led him to the other worships. They're not the same. Exactly. His sincerity led him to the other worships. So they differ in ranks. They definitely differ in ranks. طيب. The Messenger Muhammad وسلم, said, قال الله تبارك وتعالى أن أغنى الشركاء عن الشرك من عمل عملا أشرك فيه معي غيري تركته وشركه So the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, is saying that Allah the Exalted says, I am the one who does not stand in need of a partner. If anyone does anything in which he associates anyone else with me, I shall abandon him with one whom he associates with me. This is very important. This is what La ilaha illallah is all about. طيب. We said purifying your heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you depend, you depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you seek aid, you seek aid in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Test yourself. Whenever a problem occurs, the first one you seek aid from, the people or Allah, should be Allah. Because end of the day, Allah is the first and Allah is the last person to go to in the sense that no one's going to help you except Allah. Seeking help from the people, this is part of acting on causes. But in reality, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who decrees and who commands the people to help you. So you seek first and foremost Allah in your worship in surah, when you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, You alone we worship and you alone we seek help. So this is what sincerity is about. Some people think that sincerity is just, you know, uh, in worship, I'm only worshiping Allah. Yes, that's definitely part of sincerity. But also part of sincerity, you depend on Allah alone. You act on causes, but your heart, you know, is dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we're covered, we will cover shallow this matter. So now here says so sincerity is the most important worship. So sincerity here is worship. Sincerity is a worship. As we said, sincerity differs in the hearts of the people. The more sincere a person is, yeah, and he definitely you'll find that he has other worships. And this is something also very important. The worships of the heart they lead to other worships. Any sincerity at high levels, it might lead to truthfulness. It might lead, you know, to love of Allah. It might lead to other worships. But fundamentally, it is the most important one. It's the most important worship. طيب. Sincerity is not one level. So here, look, um, it makes or breaks faith in the heart. The validity of all other worships depends on it. Yeah, and you're doing a worship. You know, in fiqh, when you study fiqh, what they take about conditions, they say the intention is a condition. In fiqh, and in, in when you're studying the worships, for example, they say you have the having the intention of the worship. For example, you pray dhuhr, they say you should have the intention, the proper intention. The proper intention, you know, the jurists, the fuqaha, when they talk about intention, they mean the intention as praying dhuhr. But they're not discussing an intention that should be there. That this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do my worship for Allah. I'm not doing it for the people. I don't care what the people say. I don't care if the people miss me or they see me in the masjid. This is irrelevant because they're, I'm doing it first and foremost for Allah. First and foremost, my worship is for Allah. I care about Allah. If, even if uh, I was somewhere that nobody knows about me, I still seek to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. Why? Because I want the approval of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Yes, if the approval of the people comes, and you didn't seek it, خلاص, so, so what? doesn't make any difference. They, if the people around you, they love you or they don't, that shouldn't really make or break you. What you should really care about is, does Allah love me? How am I in the sight of Allah? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Okay, this is what's important. So sincerity is not one level. Anyone who says la ilaha illallah has the basic level of sincerity. Okay, I mentioned it here. Anyone who says this is, important, this is very important. So sincerity is not one level, okay? If you understand this matter, it will clarify so many issues. If you did not understand this, then you'll have ambiguities and problems later on. So sincerity is not one level. Anyone who says la ilaha illallah has the basic level of sincerity, yet people vary in sincerity and their reward and faith also varies based on that. We pray dhuhr. 
You know, the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned this, that people will be leaving worship and each one will have different levels. This is based on worship of the heart, the khushu and the other thing. طيب. Now, sincerity is a separate worship. It is wanting, what is someone say, okay, well, how do you define sincerity? What is sincerity? It is wanting nothing with your actions except Allah's approval. And what do you want with this action? You attended here. You came and attended. What do you want? What do you seek in you coming to this? You want to learn something new. You want to seek approval from Allah. You know that coming and attending, for example, uh, someone talking about a religious matters, you're seeking knowledge. This is a worship in itself. How do you know that this is a worship? I want to ask you a question. How do you know that seeking knowledge like what you're doing here is a worship? How can you tell that it is a worship? Who can answer? How do we know? Because how do you know that this is what we're doing here, that this is a worship? Okay, worship is what Allah loves. Good. So um, we, we go back also again. How do we know that this is something that Allah loves? How do we, okay, someone is saying, okay, well, seeking knowledge is, is ibadah. Again, how do we know this? Because first and foremost, there's a direct command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to seek, to ask Allah subhanahu to increase him in knowledge. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Allah commanded the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to seek, to ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase him in knowledge. طيب, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith, the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينَ Whoever uh, Allah wants good with, he'll give him the understanding of the religion. Allah, the Messenger Muhammad also said, Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman, salaka Allahu bihi tariqan, aw sahala Allahu lahu bihi tariqan il jannah. The Messenger Muhammad said, Whoever takes a path to attain knowledge, Allah Azza wa Jalla will put him on one of the paths to paradise or will ease for him a path to paradise. See, all these hadith shows you that Allah wants this, Allah praises those people. So, this is definitely a worship. Definitely a worship. Okay? And of course, uh, the famous hadith, the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, said that the superiority of uh, the, wor uh, the, the, the scholar over the devout worshipper is that of the full moon over the rest of the stars. So they're more superior. The scholars are more superior. And the scholars, the, the ones who are superior are those that act upon this knowledge and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your goal you sat here because you want to learn something new. You want to learn more about Allah and His Messenger. You want to learn more about Islam. This is a worship in itself. And also it will lead you to other worships. It will lead you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. So this is also, uh, you should have this intention. And this is what makes it a worship. So defining sincerity, it is wanting nothing with your actions except Allah's approval. Not caring uh, if people are ple pleased with you or not. Uh, in worship, all that is matter, all that is important is the approval of Allah. Yani you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to be pleased with you. Uh, we mentioned this point, sincerity in the heart leads to other worships. For example, a person who is sincerely worshipping Allah, seeking his approval, is never satisfied with the effort that he gives to worship. Because of sincerity, okay, the work, the worship that he does, he feels that it's not enough. What he, whatever he's doing, he feels that it is not enough. Yani, yes, I worship, but I, my shortcomings are a lot. You know, I have, I make so many mistakes. I always repent to Allah. Who does this remind you of? You know, repenting to Allah a lot. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How often did he repent Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Once a month? Once a week? Once a day? No, even more than that. Even more than that. طيب, how come he seeks repentance even though he's the greatest of all creation? Because of his sincerity, sallallahu alayhi wa he feels that Allah is even greater than all of this worship. طيب. So this is very important to understand. Yeah, this is very important to understand that Seeking Allah's approval, a person, a, a 
person who is sincerely worshipping Allah, seeking his approval, is never satisfied with the effort that he gives to worship. Because he knows that Allah is deserving of more. And that even if he does more, it is nothing compared to what Allah deserves. And that, and that uh, of course, in that he witnesses his own shortcomings. He always sees that he's not doing enough. This is, this is a sign of sincerity. If you always, your worship, you know, we have someone in the family, an old person, and he, she's very old, she prays on the chair, she does qiyam, she fasts. Uh, and she says, yeah, what, what have we done? We, we have done nothing. You guys are young, you know. Yeah. And subhanAllah, she does more than, more than anyone else in the family. MashaAllah, barakallah. May Allah preserve them. Uh, those old people that we have there in them is blessings. They're the blessings of the house, alhamdulillah. So this is a sign of sincerity, that they see whatever they do, they're lacking. They're not doing enough. While those at the opposite is true. Someone who prays, who barely prays one prayer, a day says, yeah, I, am, I am seeking for those al I see myself better than many people. This is a misconception. If you see yourself that you're better than the people, as we will come to cover, this is a very, very bad sign. طيب. Sincerity calls for other worships, like loving Allah, being truthful in actions, perfecting one's worship for Allah. Yani all of these are a result of sincerity, but... All these worships depend on sincerity. Very important. Sincerity comes first. If you're sincere, this is the first step of any journey you want to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with sincerity. If there's no sincerity, you're not going anywhere. You're fooling yourself. Any project that you want to do for the sake of Allah, any new worship that you want to master, if sincerity was not the pillar, the foundation of this worship, this is going to go nowhere. You'll find yourself going in circles. So make yourself, whatever you do, try to do it for the sake of Allah. Being patient, being good to family, do it for the sake of Allah, not because they deserve. Danny, when we have uh, counseling sessions, the, the wife says, well, he's, he's doing this, he's doing that. Why should I be good towards him? When, you know, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's not giving, he's, he's mentioning all the bad things. It's like, well, I'm not telling you that he's deserving of all this. I'm telling you, what do you think that, what is, what is Allah deserving of regarding your actions? Maybe stop, they start thinking. Doesn't Allah deserve more? Doesn't Allah, des-? she says, yes. So change yourself for the sake of Allah. And then we're going to deal with his problem. But for you, you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing with the husband, of course. Whatever you do, whatever you change, first and foremost, do it for the sake of Allah. Okay, so this is my advice. طيب, let's move to the next worship. Rely. Allah. So the first worship is sincerity. We covered this. Relying upon Allah. Uh, the verse says here, قُلْ هُوَ الرَّحْمَانُ آمَنَّا بِهِ وَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا فَسَتَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ هُوَ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ قُلْ هُوَ الرَّحْمَانُ آمَنَّا بِهِ وَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا so He's the most merciful. الرَّحْمَانُ آمَنَّا بِهِ We have believed in him. And... And upon him we have relied. And you will come to know who it is that in clear air. طيب. So we have, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have, relied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, telling the believers, قُلْ, the messenger and the believers, قُلْ هُوَ الرَّحْمَانِ He is the merciful. آمَنَّا بِهِ We believe in وَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا And in him we depend. In him we rely. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, uh, the verse that we all re, uh, recite, this is also shows you that we rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone first and foremost, and then we seek, we act on causes. Okay, look at this hadith. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu said, لو أنكم كنتم توكلون على الله حق توكله لرزق لرزقتم كما ترزق الطير تغدو خماصا وتروح بطانا. So the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying here if you were to rely upon Allah with true reliance look at this حق توكل this shows you that many people claim that they rely upon Allah but in reality they don't it's a false it's a false claim. It's a false claim. And this will be addressed, inshallah, in the explanation. It's a false claim. So there's true reliance and there's a false reliance. 
if you were to rely upon Allah with true reliance, then he would provide for you just as a bird is to provide, uh, just as uh, a bird is provided for. I think it was recently, any one of uh, our brothers, Medina, was you know showing me a video of birds. You know, it's like Subhanallah, we don't rely upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, truly as He wants. Otherwise, He would giving He would give us the rizq, the sustenance that we need, just like the birds. Okay, so it says it goes out in the morning, morning empty. So if this bird did not rely upon Allah and did not trust upon Allah. Or, or like many of our problems, we don't trust, we don't, we don't rely enough. We'll start having mental issues, depression, fear of the future, uh, seeing that the future is vague, is very scary. Why? Because we're not depending on Allah. طيب. And I like one of one of uh, our scholars here. He said something. He said, yeah, people sometimes they complain when when, when it happened, the COVID, uh, uh, when COVID occurred, you know, the salaries were cut. Some people lost their jobs. So one of the people said, <laughs> are you complaining? Uh, so the sheikh said, uh, how old are you? He said, well, I am, I don't know, 47, 50. He said, in the past 50 years, how many days? Look, in the past 50 years, how many days did you sleep on the street? I was suddenly said, uh, never. I never slept on the street. I, alhamdulillah, I always had a home and I was always provided for. He said, طيب, the last 50 years, every single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided you with what you need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was responsible for your sustenance. What makes you think that in the coming months, this will change? SubhanAllah, wallahi, it makes us feel ashamed of our actions. Yani, who is the one who has taken us? Who is the one who has protected us? Who is the one who was responsible for our sustenance? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why don't we rely on him? The past years, yeah, he's the one who fed us. He's the one who gave us shelter. He's the one who provided for us. All our matters, all our needs was fulfilled with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, yet we worry about the future. See, worrying is sometimes based on doubts. Mere doubts, mere doubts, nothing, nothing real. And here, the Messenger of Muhammad وسلم, is telling us, if you would rely upon Allah with true reliance, then he'd, خلاص, he will suffice you. Just like he suffices this bird. Does this bird go and make phone calls before it goes in the morning? Does it go and make phone calls to the people in the street? Are you sure that there's enough food? Are you sure? Can you give me assurance? This or that. The birds don't do this. خلاص, in the morning, they go, depending on Allah, they don't say, what if? I did not find food. What if this happened? What if that happened? These things don't occur. The birds, what happens? خلاص, they leave the nests early in the morning hungry. They, ha- they get enough food for themselves and they get enough foods for, for the young birds. They have enough food for themselves and enough food for the, for their young, for the young birds. This is reliance upon Allah. So this is very important, huh? So relying upon Allah is entrusting all your matters to him after acting on worldly causes. Actually, it's first you rely upon Allah before acting on causes and after acting on causes. You depend on Allah even when doing doing your causes. So this statement, relying upon Allah is entrusting all your matters to him after acting on worldly causes doesn't mean that you do the causes and then you think about Allah. It doesn't mean this. It means Entrusting, uh, acting on causes is a result of depending on Allah also. So you depend on Allah first and foremost, and then you act on worldly causes, knowing that the one who will make these causes blessed is Allah, not the causes themselves. Okay, and we can all relate to this. You're seeking a husband, you're seeking a wife, you're seeking work. You don't go and say, uh, you know that it's not in the hand of this manager. It's not, maybe the manager might agree. And then you find a problem, خلص, everything خلص, goes. And you might say that I'm overqualified, I'm qualified enough for this. And then they say, subhanAllah, no, there's some other problem. And they choose someone else. You might seek the sister for marriage and then, subhanAllah, something occurs. This, mashallah, husband, uh, this person who wants to seek marriage, everything is perfect from all aspects. SubhanAllah, something goes wrong. You depend on Allah first and foremost. And then you act on causes. طيب. 
So here also acting on causes is what the birds are doing. So did the birds, when they acted on causes, did they sit in the nest and wait? Or did they go out searching for food? They go out searching for food. So depending on Allah means, and relying on Allah means to act on causes. But you want sustenance. You sit at home, you don't, you don't go to work, you don't go and find a job. This is not acting on causes. You want to learn the religion, you ask Allah for the firdaus al-a'la, but you're not doing any worship. How are you acting on causes? This, is, this baffles me. A person has high aspirations, you know, I want the firdaus al-a'la, I want the highest level in Jannah. He doesn't want to do anything more. He barely does the bare minimum. It's, you know, you're trusting Allah, act on causes. The causes, the worldly causes, and the religious causes. طيب. The one who commanded us to rely on him is the one who commanded us to act on causes. Very important. Who's the one who commanded us to rely on him? Allah. طيب. Who's the one who commanded us to act on the causes? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know the verse, أَمْ لِلْإِنسَانِ مَا تَمَنَّى فَلِلَّهِ الْآخِرَةُ وَالْأُولَى It was said that, you know, is it just... Does it all depend on what the person wishes? And the human being, us humans, man, he wishes for so many things. طيب. يعني in, ma- in worldly matters and in religious matters, he always wishes for something. But it, uh, يعني just like Allah Azza wa Jal had made a system, <coughs> yeah, for example, in this world, if you're seeking a child, you have to get married. And then this woman, you know, it gets, uh, she gets pregnant and all these causes happen. And then, alhamdulillah, you get the child. Does it, is it possible for you? If somebody says, you know, I always sit at home and make dua that Allah gives me a child without marriage. Astaghfirullah. Without marriage and without, you know, what, what do you expect? To wake up in the morning and you find an egg next to you? It doesn't make sense. طيب. Allah Azza wa has made a system, a uh, law for the dunya. And he also made a law for the akhirah. A system of laws for the akhirah. You wish to to be of the high levels of paradise. You can't just sit, do nothing, and expect these things to happen. You have to act on causes, worldly causes and religious causes. You make a goal, you act and work towards that goal. If you just sit and daydream, that's not going to achieve anything. If you fall sick, you are. For this is an example. If you fall sick, you are commanded to seek medical attention. Yet not neglecting the fact that the cure is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is very evident when you feel the doctor says, you know, we don't know uh, yani exactly what is the cause. Uh, we'll try this. We'll try that. Yeah, this is what they're doing. They're trying this. They're trying that. طب, who knows the cause? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, who makes these actions of the doctor? Who guides these doctors to what is right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. You depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. So, uh, <laughs> subhanAllah, well, once I was doing a root canal, and during the procedure, the doctor said, oh, so when I heard this, خلاص, and I almost panicked, depending on Allah. I said, خلاص, I depend on Allah. No matter what happens, خلاص, I'm depending on Allah, because the pain is increasing. So, <laughs> subhanAllah, yani, end of the day, it's in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As, you know, during the procedure, you say, I ask, uh, you ask Allah sincerely to guide this doctor to do what is right. طيب. The cure is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These doctors are causes. You have someone, a family member, going to be uh, an important, is going, going to be uh, uh, an important procedure, is going to uh, undertake an important procedure, medical procedure, whether it's a, an open chest surgery or something, you know, very severe. You depend on Allah. You act on causes, you find the, the best doctor that you can, that is available, and then you depend on Allah. It's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You increase your worship because it's in the hand of Allah. Even if they do the best thing possible, who will give this body the proper response? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. That's why we always rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. In the above hadith, in the above hadith, uh, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, described true reliance. So true reliance. Then mention the example of the hungry bird. It leaves the nest hungry, searching for food and trusting in Allah uh, that they will be aided and Allah will provide for them. So the, the birds, when they leave in the morning, they trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is going to provide them. They don't trust uh, that, you know, this area there will be food and that area. No, they trust in Allah that Allah will suffice them. 
Subhanallah, these animals, some of, some of them, they're doing more worship than us humans. Us humans, one of us could be praised more than, could be better than, than most of these creation or could be worse than most of these creation. Better in the sense you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by choice and you're doing, and you're increasing in faith. Worse than these animals, you're disbelieving in Allah. You're not doing what is required. Yet these animals are doing and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're obeying Allah and what they are commanded with. That's why you find this in the Quran so many times. Allah comparing those who disbelieve to, to the cattle, to the, to, to the sheep. You know, uh, even saying that the sheep are better than them. طيب, the animals are better than them. You find this in the Quran, subhanAllah. An important point regarding reliance, relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires knowledge of Allah. Because if you want to rely on someone, you want to know how the, that this one that you're going to be relying on is powerful, is knowledgeable, he's in control. طيب, you know this about Allah. Relying on Allah requires knowledge of Allah's names, knowing that he is the true provider, knowing that he is the Lord whom all depend on. Your sustenance is not under the hand of your manager or employer. It's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always depend on Allah in all of your matters, no matter how small, no matter what problem you're facing, depend and rely upon Allah. And remember the birds, the example of the birds. And subhanAllah, this example of the birds, you see birds almost on a daily basis. Let this be a reminder. When early in the morning you see birds you know, flying, they're searching for food. And they're depending on Allah. So what's stopping you from depending on Allah? Make this a reminder for you. Be of those that are smart with their worship, always depending on Allah, always you know, seeking uh, the approval from Allah, trying to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with every way possible. Tayyip. And subhanAllah, this is part of being conscious of Allah. Tayyip. Being conscious of Allah. Uh, Al-Khushu'ah, being conscious of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, and seek help, seek aid through patience and prayer. And indeed, it is difficult except for the humbly, submissive to Allah. Al-Khashi'ah, Al-Khushu'ah. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is commanding us to seek aid in patience and in prayer. Both of these are important weapons for a Muslim. Patience, patience is in two things. Patience in patience. Subhanallah. Uh, there's a okay. There's a section that is missing. But anyways, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala here says, "I'll explain it to you." وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Seeking aid in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in patience and prayer. These two are important weapons for a Muslim. These two are important weapons for a Muslim. Patience and prayer. طيب. Patience is in two things. In patience and where people, when we talk about patience, many people think about uh, uh, restricting or restraining yourself when something bad happens. Yes, this is part of patience. But the best worship of patience, the most important patience, is patience in worship. Being patient when doing the obligatory worship. Being patient when you wake up for Fajr prayer. Being patient when you go and do what is right, especially the obligations. Okay, you feel tired at the end of the day, you still didn't pray Isha, you want to sleep? No. You go, you make wudu, and you go and pray Isha prayer. But if this requires patience, no doubt. Uh, something haram. Okay, you have a choice of doing something haram or not, doing something prohibited or not. You need patience, okay, to, to make the right decision. طيب. And also, so Allah Azza wa Jalla is telling us, seek aid in patience and seek aid in prayer, salah. طيب. Seeking aid in salah, how do you seek aid in salah? Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying that salah is a key for you. Salah is a weapon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in other verses of the Quran, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Salah, worship, the worship of Salah, prevents from major and minor sins. طيب. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the different battles, like the battle of Badr, 
uh, the battle of Al-Ahzab, you know, it was an important battle the next day. The disbelievers have surrounded the Medina. Uh, uh, so the disbelievers, they're going to meet the disbelievers. And it's a battle of Islam versus disbelief. And it's an important battle. So this is, I mean, the outcome of this battle is huge. So he, this is the time to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what, what happened here? Did the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, sleep? No, he stayed up at night worshipping Allah, standing up in worship and making dua, supplicating. So when you have something important that is coming in your life, seek aid in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? By worship, by prayer. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةً It is, you know, it is something heavy, definitely, no doubt. It is something difficult, something heavy. Except those who are, uh, who have khushu' who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, let me explain this. Being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being aware of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for example, I'll add these points, inshallah, to you. Uh, in prayer, the example of the prayer. We hear khushu' and prayer. So we find the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu said a person prays his prayer and then he leaves his prayer and it was not written for him. Not, not the, the, the part of it that was accepted was sometimes a tenth of the worship. A ninth of the worship. You know, seventh, eighth, uh, seventh, sixth, fifth, fourth, third, half of the worship. Sometimes half of the worship is written for you, is accepted. And the other half is not. But why? Why is this part of worship accepted and the other part is not accepted? Because of khushur, being conscious. Some people stand up in worship and they have no clue what they have said. Some, subhanAllah, it happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. Sometimes you're, you're thinking about something else in worship and it affects your worship, definitely. So this is something very important. Being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship. Is this specific to prayer or is this general? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked about the messengers, وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ in all of their actions, they were conscious. They were aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they're alone, they're aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, nobody sees them. No one sees you. Yet they're humble. They're submissive to Allah. They do dhikr. They might even uh, remember some of Allah's names. They might remember some verses. This affects their hearts. They might even, you know, uh, cry uh, seeking Allah's approval. Yet nobody sees them. They're, خلاص, it affects them. They're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something happens in front of them. It affects them. They're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone reminds them of Allah. SubhanAllah, it directly, you know, it directly goes to his heart because they're always conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. So these are the most important things. A person, a Muslim, should always be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of his matters. How you treat people. If he, somebody said something bad to you. Okay, do you retaliate? No, you're aware that Allah is listening to you. You're aware that, you know, if you do something bad, if you retaliate, you might harm this servant of Allah. Even though that this person did something bad to you, you do not retaliate. You're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it is time to worship Allah, you leave what you're doing. You're conscious of Allah. You're going to do something very important. You're going to a very important meeting. What, a very important meeting with the minister, with the manager? No. Someone more important with the king, no, with the king of kings, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're conscious of Allah, you make wudu, being aware that you're going to meet someone very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what it means to be khushur. This is what it means. To, and sadly, yani, so may Allah forgive us all. We're all lacking this. People make wudu, they're laughing, they're, they, they're not even aware where they're going. If you're washing your limbs, you're preparing yourself to, for an important meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like a person in worship, in reality, khalas, and he's meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's, he's, whatever he's reciting, he's directing it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, this is a very intimate time, a time with your creator. So this is not just the worship. In all of your, ta in all of your matters, you should be aware. And then, this differs from one person to the other. This differs. Some people you see, on, it looks on their face. It doesn't mean that a person stays like this all the time. It doesn't smile. He doesn't, no. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is yani, the best of creation. 
Definitely, there's no one more conscious of Allah than the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. طيب, how was he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He, and he'd smile with his family, he'd give his family time, he'd give his friends, his companions time, uh, he'd do what is, uh, what is important. طيب, he never oppresses anyone. Even if somebody, uh, if someone uh, says something bad to him, you'll find him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgiving, pardoning. And he's the, the eminent Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of worshippers. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who's truly conscious of Allah. So, this, so what we what we need here is that conscious uh, khushu' being conscious of Allah is in worship and it's outside worship. Khushu' differs from one person to the other. Okay, khushu' is what yani, the effect of knowing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sees you, the effect of knowing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala hears you. This is what khushu' is. طيب. طيب. <clears throat> Go to the next uh, worship, which is fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. Fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here saying, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ So the devil frightens you of his supporters. يخوف إنما ذلك الشيطان يخوف أولياء يخوف أولياء. Okay, الشيطان is putting the fear in your hearts of his supporters. Okay, saying no, 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 don't do this, don't do this. Something bad will happen. سبحان الله. Allah is telling you, no, do not fear them. Fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى. You want to worship Allah. You want to do something for Allah. Of course, given that you're wise and you understand what is pleasing to Allah, you're acting on knowledge, you're acting on wisdom, very important. You're acting on knowledge and you're acting on wisdom. Then don't fear anyone. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, you know what is right. You know what to do. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in doing what is right. Okay, Don't be afraid. Someone is telling you, you were the group of people that are doing haram. I'll give you an example. You're with a group of people that are doing haram. Let me say, for example, everyone is drinking around you. You shouldn't be with that group. But anyone, everyone is drinking. So here, somebody gives you, you know, drink with us. So if you drink with them, of course, I'm talking about haram things, not normal drinking juice. I'm talking about alcohol. So they tell you, have, you know, a glass with us. You don't say, okay, nobody knows me here. You know, I can enjoy myself. No, do not. And they say, no, if you don't do this, you might be fired. You might get fired. If you don't do this thing, you might get fired. You might lose this job. See, subhanAllah. This is, see, these things, this is the shaitan making you fear uh, his supporters. See, no, I fear Allah. I'm not going to do this. Of course, this is something haram. This is something wrong. I'm not going to do this. Okay. They say, oh, but you might, this might happen to you. That might happen to you. Say, wallahi, it's with, it's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي Fear Allah. I don't fear the people. This is something, you know, challenging. Many of us will be tested with this. Okay, on all levels, scholars, knowledge seekers, normal people, we're all tested. We're all tested with this. So the advice is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly and do something, end of the day, that is pleasing to Allah. And fearing Allah, is this something bad? You know, some, we have this new movement here or new um, ideas that are, that are uh, being spread that, you know, no, worship Allah with love and not fear. This is a big mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising the believers. What, are, what is he saying subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ They are fearful of the punishment of their Lord. طب, let's talk. Let's talk about the best of creation. Who's the best of creation? Who's the group of people, the best of all creation, the best of all humans? Who are they? Can you tell me? Who are they? Tell me in the chat. Who's the best people? The scholars, companions. Who's the best of? Al-Anbiya. Zakum Allah khair. Al-Anbiya. The prophets. The prophets. Definitely. Yani, how did they worship Allah? They worshipped Allah with love and fear. وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا يعني They feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, they worshipped Allah with fear and they worshipped Allah with hope and they worshipped Allah with love. And these are the best of creation. Do you think 
Someone thinks that a person fears Allah is only a person who's doing sins. <laughs> a person who's sinning is not a person who fears Allah. A person who fears Allah, who knows about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knows what Allah is capable of. طيب, Allah is powerful. He warned his servants in the text of the Quran and Sunnah that his punishment is severe. When one reads such texts, he believes in them and glorifies Allah, fearing his punishment. We hear in so many verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned how he has taken his enemies in punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has aided the messengers and destroyed their enemies. When we read these stories okay, in the Quran that happened, these are facts. Anything in the Quran is a fact. Is it just to read for you to know or is there something required from us? There's definitely something required for us, for, from us. When we hear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed his enemies, we fear, of course, this is someone who is powerful. This is the creator himself. Look how he destroyed Qawm Ad. Look how he destroyed Fir'aun. Look how he destroyed Qawm Lut. Okay, look, look at Thamud. This is a warning for all of us. This is the one who punished. And these generations of people that we're talking about, what about them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, has said, um, Allah Azza has mentioned, as talking about the past days, she's saying they were more powerful than us. They had more wealth than us. They were strong. Some of these nations, they used to build their houses inside mountains with ease. And when they, when they fought, you know, they were arrogant and they destroyed, you know, the, the, their enemies. And they used to make these such grave claims saying, who is stronger than us? Who is more powerful than us? They did they not see that the one who created them is stronger than them? Although Allah is saying, and then Allah destroyed them. This is what's Qawm Ad. How did Allah destroy them? With, with flames? You know, with mountains coming on their heads? No. With the lightest thing possible, with the wind. Hurricanes that were so destructive, taking them, cutting them into parts, breaking them into parts. Yet they were known as being huge. Uh, their bodies were huge and they were strong. And Allah Azza wa has said this, that he created them different. They were larger in size. Uh, in size. Yet they were dismantled. They were broken into pieces. By the lightest thing possible, by the wind. Subhanallah. You're, so you've, so you're, uh, um, what's it called? You have to know your limits with Allah. So when a person reads how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the past nations, his heart should be, should have fear. Say, Allah, I am dealing, I'm worshipping the one who is strong, the one who destroys his enemies. I should definitely fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I make a mistake, if somebody, if an, if an option comes to you to make a mistake, to make something haram, okay, a choice, you have a choice to do something right or something wrong, you remember the fear, the fear of Allah. This will help you in do the right, doing the right thing. I can endure this punishment, but I cannot endure the punishment of Allah. This is what Imam Ahmed used to say. He said, well, when uh, he was tested, he said, well, if, I, if I'm punished in this world, this is something that I can endure. But I cannot endure the punishment of Allah. I know the punishment of Allah. Being a scholar of Islam, knowing all the, Quran, the texts of Quran and Sunnah, understanding, you know, how strong and powerful his creator is, saying, you know, I can endure this punishment of this world. Yeah, what are they going to do? Kill me? That's, that's, that, 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 anyway, anyway, that's limited punishment. The punishment of Allah is unlimited. And it's much more severe than all of this. So a person should say this, yani, fear of Allah is a great worship and Allah praises those that fear him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fearing Allah, fearing, fearing Allah's punishment. So when you read the Quran, when you hear about the stories of the past, let this affect you. You're not just entertained. This should affect you, knowing that, subhanahu wa Allah is powerful, that Allah is warning us all. Like, fear is a great worship. It is the way of the messengers. They worshipped Allah, the uh, way of the messengers who worshipped and those that know what Allah is capable of. Fearing Allah is a worship and it balances the heart with hope. We hope for Allah's mercy and we fear our sins. Nobody here can say, I have no reason to fear Allah. How, how, how can you say this? We all make mistakes. 
all sons of Adam are wrongdoers. And the best of those wrongdoers are those that repent. We all make mistakes, brothers and sisters. We all made mistakes in our lives. No one here is pure that he did not make any mistakes. No one, no one. Okay? But it's all about going back to Allah and repentance. Repenting to Allah. Seeking forgiveness from Allah. This is what is important. So, okay, the matter of uh, balance in the heart, if there's just hope and some people say, no, just have hope. Okay, if we only have hope, if we don't have fear, what's going to happen? A person will, will transgress. Who's going to stop him from following his desires? You need something to stop you. That is the fear of Allah. If you have something, if you only worship Allah with fear, you don't have any hope, you lose, you know... What's it called? You lose hope in the future. You lose hope in Allah's mercy. And Allah doesn't want this. Actually, this is a sin. Losing hope in Allah's mercy is a sin. Everyone should have a hope, should have hope in Allah's mercy. Like, some people fall into the trap of the devil. They either have no fear of Allah and commit sins without caring. This is what we see. Or are in the other extreme where they cross the boundary and lose hope in Allah's mercy. What did I say at the end? Both are grave sins. Losing hope in Allah's mercy, that is a grave sin. By, by crossing all the boundaries, doing whatever you care, not caring about Allah, this is a grave sin. By, then what's, what do we do? Uh, a believer's heart should be balanced, fearing Allah and having hope in his mercy. Let's let's go forward. By, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was talking about the hope of Allah. It, it makes sense to take these two together. We spoke about the fear of Allah, now we have the hope Having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعْبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying that So whoever would hope for the meeting You hope, you have hope in meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You know that you're going to be meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You should have, you have this is what hope is Having hope in Allah's mercy now, there is no life without hope. Nobody, without hope, there is no life, real. Yani, how can you say not having hope? If you don't have hope, there won't even be belief. Without hope, there's no belief. Hope is the light at the end of the tunnel telling us that things are going to get better. And you're going through a difficult situation. And you're patient and you feel that the world is dark and black. And you see that the future, yeah, the future looks very ambiguous and scary. But what do we do? Here's where the hope comes. Hope gives you a chance saying that, you know what? And he is going to get better. Inshallah. You're doing this for the... It's having hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying, Ya Allah, I ask, Inshallah, this will be accepted. You're going through a difficult time. You're saying, Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah is going to be accepting this worship. You made qiyam. You got tired. You say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Yes, I'm tired. Yes, I'm feeling this pain. But Alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah will accept this from me. And I'll get great reward for this. This will not be forgotten by Allah. This is having a good opinion of Allah. This is having hope in Allah. You went and attended a class. One hour. One hour, 30 minutes. It took a lot of time. And the Sheikh keeps on talking. You know, sometimes you try to concentrate. Here you say, Alhamdulillah, I'll forget about this, but... It will be written for me that I did attend. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be written with the organizers. It's gonna be written with you. The angel on your right is going to be writing this. He said, Alhamdulillah, I have attended. Alhamdulillah, I get this reward. And you're having hope in Allah that Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal will give me the blessing of this lecture. Inshallah, I'll be acting on this. Inshallah, inshallah, this might be the lecture that will change myself. That will change me for the future. That I'll be a better worshiper of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. See, this is having hope. I'm dealing with sins. Every day, I'm struggling with this sin. Some days I win, some days the sin wins, and it's a difficult battle. You have hope in Allah, inshallah, this th these things will change. Inshallah, I'll be a better person. There'll come a day where I'll leave all these sins, and I'll be a humble, a model worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyip. Tayyip, hope is part of having a good opinion. Every single one of us is commanded to have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that Allah is merciful and his mercy is for the righteous. This is what a good opinion is. Tayyip, Tayyip okay, let's continue. False hope, Tayyip, this is having hope. Tayyip, what is false hope? False hope is where the devil deluded the person into feeling secure, even though he is committing 
this should be even though he is committing sins. طيب, even though he is committing sins. This, this statement is incorrect. طيب, false hope is where the devil deluded the person into feeling secure, even though he is committing many sins. So, you know, some people, they do all kinds of sins, doing haram, clear haram, clear haram. You know, we have people, I have uh, some cases. <laughs> and the woman, she doesn't pray. She drinks, the husband drinks. They don't pray at all. Maybe once per week, Jum'a, maybe. If uh, there was a red moon, يعني, they might pray once. They don't pray. طيب. And they talk about Allah's mercy. Look, Allah's mercy, Allah Azza wa has said that his mercy is for the righteous. Allah decreed that his mercy is for the righteous. We're not people that say, don't lose hope. Have hope, but act on the same. Have a good opinion of Allah. Having a good opinion of Allah is what doing the worship and hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your deeds. So you worship Allah and you have hope that Allah will accept your worship. This is what hope is, true hope. What is false hope? False hope is doing nothing. No, is doing sins and saying, ya la la, Allah will forgive me. Allah will give me the high levels in paradise. You're not doing any worship, brother. You're just doing sins and sins. You think that no, no, Allah will forgive. You forgive based on what? Allah forgives from whoever who wills, but Allah is wise. Allah is also powerful. Allah Azza wa has talked about how he uh, punished those who disobeyed him. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded those who obeyed him. You can't just come up with saying no, but you're not different than anyone else. Okay, all the rules in the Quran and Sunnah, it applies to everyone. Okay, it doesn't matter who you, where you come from, it doesn't matter what stat status you have. So we do the worship and we hope that Allah accepts it. When we're sinning, when we repent. Yes, if a sinner repents to Allah, he has hope that Allah accepts his repentance. This is something good. This is true hope. So let's look. True hope. Uh, true hope that we, what is true hope? True hope is when we are commanded. Hope that we, okay, true hope that we, okay, true hope that we are <coughs> commanded. Uh, the true hope that we're commanded with, the true hope that we're commanded with is to have a good opinion of Allah regarding our deeds. So what is the true hope? Is to, the, ones, the, the true hope that we're commanded with is to have a good opinion of Allah regarding our deeds. Hoping that Allah accepts them and multiplies them. Hoping that when we repent to Allah, our sins will be expiated and will be replaced with good deeds. So you know that acts of worship are, are, are multiplied, yeah? A worship that you do is multiplied by 10, is multiplied by 100, uh, sorry, multiplied by 10, multiplied by 700, multiplied by many multiples. This is what the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu has told us. Taib. Taib, is this for everyone? Yes, but what are the factors that make this worship multiplied? It goes back to sincerity and truthfulness and many of the worships of the heart. Taib. When you do a worship, and you're sincere, and you're hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it, and you're hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies it, this is a proper hope. This is a valid hope. Because you're worshipping Allah, you're doing what He wants, and you have hope that Allah accepts this. This is, this is the right way. Don't fall the, the trap of the shaitan. You're doing worship, you're doing worship, and then you're saying, Ya Allah, Allah will not accept this. Allah will not accept this. Maybe I should not be doing more. Allah will not accept. This is the trap of the shaitan. If your opinion of Allah is something that is stopping you from worshipping Allah, this is definitely, definitely the trap of the shaitan. You should motivate yourself saying, Ya Allah, Allah will be happy with me. Allah will be pleased with me when I worship him. I didn't pray for so long. But if I repent to Allah, Allah will be pleased with my actions. Tayyip. Uh... Okay, let's I think I think we will stop here. Okay, we'll stop here and we'll continue inshallah tomorrow early. Tomorrow inshallah everything will be fixed and we will start early inshallah. Uh so four sharp and we'll finish this and we'll have a Q&A. And everything that uh, is not clear, inshallah, will be clarified tomorrow with the will of Allah. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, 
So uh, with this, inshallah, we will end. And inshallah, we'll be meeting tomorrow with the will of Allah. And uh, I apologize again for what happened. SubhanAllah, this is something, our, uh, this system has been used so many times. This has never happened. So Qaddarullah ma shafa'al. Qaddarullah ma shafa'al. Tayyip. And I apologize again for what happened. And inshallah, tomorrow we'll start early and we'll finish this workbook and prepare your questions. Go over it. If there's something that you don't understand, tayyib, ask about it. Tayyib. And inshallah, we'll be discussing it tomorrow with the will of Allah. Hada wallahu alam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair.